Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna learn about HDR. In particular, how to edit it in DaVinci Resolve and how to deliver it to YouTube. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the gear I use to pull off HDR editing, grading, and exporting. I'll leave a helpful link to everything I talk about in the description below this video. You're going to need a good camera. I'm using the Blackmagic Ursa 12K because it records 12-bit RAW and has 14 stops of dynamic range. You can use a different camera of course, but a high bit rate and good dynamic range is what matters most. Next, the computer I'm using is nothing special, just a 2019 iMac with DaVinci Resolve installed on it. But in order to grade HDR and see what you are actually doing, you'll also need a playback unit capable of outputting HDR. I'm using the Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio 4K Mini. It's connected to my Mac using a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Finally, you'll need an HDR monitor. I'm using this ProArt monitor. It gets an HDR signal through an HDMI cable coming from the Ultra Studio 4K Mini. Without that basic gear, editing HDR is quite difficult. You won't be able to see what you are doing on your computer's monitor alone. So now I'm in DaVinci Resolve. I created a new project and put together my video on a timeline in SDR, the workflow I assume you are used to. It's just seven simple shots on a bed of music. I've not done any grading or color correction at all yet. If I switch from edit to color mode, I can select my first clip and then press and hold shift and then click on my last clip to highlight and select all of my clips then right click on my mouse and select add into current group. Then just above my node, I can switch from clip to group preclip. Then I can right click on my node and add a LUT to all of my clips at once by selecting LUT, Blackmagic Design, Blackmagic Gen 5 Film to Video. If you used a different camera, you would of course pick the appropriate LUT. I'll switch back to timeline mode and play back my timeline. Here's what my simple video looks like in SDR. It's not bad with just the LUT, but it's not HDR. Let's change that. I'll switch back to color mode. Then I'll click on the first clip so that we can look at it. Then I'll go down to my scopes and view my waveform monitor, which is already open for me. Then I'll click the dot 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 icon to view more options. Then I'll change waveform scale style from 10 bit to HDR. Now you'll notice our waveform goes all the way up to 10,000 nits. Next, I'll go down to the project settings wheel icon and click on it. In the master settings tab under video monitoring, I'll click on enable HDR metadata over HDMI. I'll also set my video format to UHD 23.976 to match what I shot my footage at so I can see it on my external monitor properly. You of course would choose the proper setting that's right for what you shot and what your external HDR monitor can display. Next, I'll click on the color management tab and under color space and transforms, I'll change color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed. I'll uncheck automatic color management and change color processing mode to HDR Rec 2020 PQ. P3 to D65 Limited. Under Output Color Space, I'll select Rec 2020 ST2084 1000 nits. Then I'll check HDR Mastering for 1000 nits. Then I'll press Save. Look what just happened on my external HDR monitor. My HDR image looks way oversaturated and overexposed now. This is because I need to change LUTs. 
I'll right click on my group preclip node, go to LUT, then go to Origami HDR Blackmagic Natural, then I'll select version 1. I purchased this HDR LUT and really like it. I'll leave a link to it. That HDR LUT looks washed out on my iMac monitor, but on my external HDR monitor it looks awesome now, and this is why you need an external HDR monitor to grade in HDR. If my footage needs grading, I'll change group preclip back to clip, and then select my first clip, then go to the HDR wheels and fine tune my color grade. Basically, HDR grading reacts differently to video than Rec. 709 grading does with the non-HDR color wheels. That's why you'll want to use the HDR color wheels when grading in HDR. You'll notice that there are more wheels than what you are used to in SDR. If I arrow click to the left once, there's black, dark, shadow, and then if we hit the right arrow, we also get light. Then if we hit the right arrow again, we get high light. Then if we hit the right arrow again, we get specular. These wheels are about fine tuning your HDR grade. Then of course we have the global wheel. Although I like the look of my footage with just the LUT on it, my highlights are a slight bit hot. So I'll grab the highlight exposure slider and bring it down a little until it's no longer a hard straight line on my scopes. Then I'll go over to the shadow wheel and adjust the exposure slider down a little to add a little more contrast in my shot. My white balance must have been a little off when I was shooting this footage. So I'll go to the camera raw tab. Under decode using, I'll change it from project to clip. Then under white balance, I'll change it from as shot to daylight. It warmed up my image a little bit. In fact, I'll do this on all of my shots because I like that look. Note, if your image is really under or overexposed, adjusting ISO settings can be very helpful too. For example, my second shot is a little clipped. I'll change it from ISO 400 to 320. In fact, I'll do that adjustment on several of my clips now. Luckily, the HDR LUT did the heavy lifting, and my footage was shot well and didn't need any serious work. Now let's export an HDR file for YouTube. I'll go to the Deliver tab. Then I'll give my file a name. Let's go with HDR YouTube Test Clip. Then I'll give it a location to save to. For video format, I'll go with QuickTime. For codec, I'll go with DNX HR. For type, I'll go with DNX HR HQX 10-bit. Then I'll click Add to Render Queue and then click Render All. Finally, I'll upload my exported video to YouTube. Your file will be pretty large if it's long so it might take time to upload and process before you'll actually be able to view it in HDR. Don't expect instant results. Here's my HDR video after processing. I opened it in my Chrome browser because Chrome can show HDR YouTube videos. If I click on the settings icon, you'll see that the quality of this video goes all the way up to 4K HDR. My computer monitor is not HDR, so to see it playing back on YouTube in all of its glory, I'll watch it on my LG Dolby Vision television in my living room, playing back on my TV's YouTube app. Unfortunately, this tutorial is in SDR, but I'll leave a link to the HDR version and you can watch it if you have an HDR monitor. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.